What's going on everyone? Welcome back to my YouTube. Um, today I got something very excited to show you guys. It's something I've been needing to do to my car for a while now. Uh, you know that car is full bolt on but it is not tuned. I finally got a tuner for the Acura TL. You guys have a 04 to 06 Acura TL 6 speed you would know that we need a type S ECU to hook up Honda to it or K2. I got the Honda Flash Pro, type S ECU and the harness and adapter. Actually, I got it since October, but it took a while because um, Honda stopped making the harness. So he also took it upon himself to make us some harness under the name Fastline. They claim it should still be good, so I give him our trust that works for that. Shout out to Hilto and Marcus and his crew for sending the package and making sure everything's correct and making this video possible. Before we start this video, we need a disclaimer. For a TL owner, 04 to 06, you have to be a 6 speed to do this ECU swap. And the ECU can either be 07, 08 Type S 6 speed or 07, 08 automatic base model ECU. It is going to be plug and play. Um, there is some wire you have to uh, mess with. Uh, I know the adapter, you're going to have to mess with that a little bit. Um, Especially the one in the dash but there's instruction just follow that i'll show you a majority of everything here but i still recommend going you to go read that instructions for yourself just in case um i'm gonna show you in a minute all right let's get to it another thing i want you guys to know is when you guys do the ecu swap you're going to have to do a key immobilizer um relearn or ecu relearn as well probably gonna have to go to the dealer i'll go through everything what you install first before you go to the dealer and then afterward let them know what's going on and have them reprogram everything for you but in my case i have a scan tool at my shop that should be able to program my ecu for me um i'm hoping this works because if not uh, <laughs> uh this video is not gonna go up so all right uh i bought myself a draggy setup um i was gonna do a video about it but the road in mexico is where i go to have a lot of traffic you know i don't know where my man riff a lot find these roads in mexico but i can't find them hey riff you know you find any road let me know because i uh can't find any but um i got the instructions right here what you do is you scan this barcode you have an iphone or if you have um an android go ahead and type that in Press pause in this part and type that in. Shut the fuck up. All right, on the instructions, you have to pop this out. There's a harness in there. You have to hook that uh, white and red wire into, and you wire it down into the OBD port. I'm gonna go through the instructions again, make sure I'm doing everything correct. I also advise you guys to do that as well. I'm still recording. Okay, now I got this, um, the trim's unhooked. Uh, what you want to do now is put a flathead in there. Not a Phillips, but what I'm using. Gonna pry up a little gently, pry up, and that side's out. Turn it on this side. That's kind of out. Um, I have an aftermarket radio, so this is gonna be a little. So, there we go. Easy peasy. There we go. Um get my hand light as well i'll be right back all right um that was a bit of a pain in the ass but i managed to get it in um so it says it's gonna be e um the red and white wire is gonna go into e2 and e3 um starting from th this uh clip facing facing you pushing it down it's gonna be a b c d and e it is gonna be one two three four five the fifth one over um the number is going to be from the bottom to the top so one two three four so two is going to be the uh third one um three is going to be the second one so with this clip looking on top um this push thing right here looking on top okay so the red's gonna be on top and the white one's gonna be on the bottom and you're looking at those two right on top of my thumb right there so i'm gonna go over with you guys again a b C, D, E. Go down. Four, three, it's gonna be red, and two. E, two is gonna be the white. Once you got that done, um, you run this end 
all the way down to the OBD port. Oh, another thing. Um, I was trying to figure out which way because I could have swore it was this way. Um, this one going up there, but um, make sure the one with it, the uh, long tang right here, it's gonna go to the bottom. Um, the instruction didn't really say it, but um, I was trying for 30 minutes to try to plug this side in because um, I could have swore this connector is, looks like the one in there, but um, it's hard to see when the thing's um, all the way in there. It's kind of hard to pull it out. Uh, you're gonna have minimal play. Um, what I did was I kind of, I did the white one first on the bottom, kind of with uh, one hand, can't really do much. If you remove the speaker, you have a little bit more room here. Um, I push it towards this way with my uh, pointing finger and I use these flathead and a really small flathead and kind of push it in there without damaging the other wire. And the top one should be easier and push it in. Um, make sure you hear a click because if you don't hear a click, that means it's not in there. Give it a good tug, make sure it's in there. Um, like I said, do from the top first because they, after you do it the top, it's going to be really difficult to do from the bottom. And once you get the top in there, uh, good luck getting that bitch out. Let's go ahead and wire it up down to the OBD port and uh, afterward we can hook up the ECU. Alright, um, this is under the dash. You're going to have to remove the kick panel um, from the driver's side. Um, so what I did was I ran the wire from up top from the uh, center console all the way down and I tucked it behind the uh, clutch pedal control and run it behind the other wire as well. What you're gonna have to do next is D pin number 14, which is the gray wire. Son of a crap cake. <laughs> Appreciate it, fam. <laughs> this one's gonna be number 16. It's gonna be 15, 14, which is the third one from the top. Um, you look close, there's gonna be a number right here. Uh, it's gonna be a one, which is one, eight, nine, and 16. You move over. 16, 15, 14, blah, 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 gray wire, deep pin that shit. Um, and the instructions, uh, the instructions on my phone, so I can't really show you. So um, what you're gonna wanna do is stick a flathead right in there, push on that tap, and gently tug on the wire with the gray wire, and it shit comes right out. All right, um, so I got the gray wire deep pin. They said it uh, used the flathead that comes with the, uh, that they give with the tool, but uh, apparently mine didn't have it. Um, uh, but yeah, I just, I managed to get it out with a pick. Um, I put a pick in there, set it on a 14, push up on the tap. Uh, it's hard to show you, but. Right, yeah. You see that tap in there? That's kind of, kind of damaged a little bit. Yeah, that's the one right there. Um, that's a tap. Um, let me double check the instructions, see where you want to hook that one up and these. I know the red and white, I know the red is going to go into the 14, the white is going to go into a 6, I believe. And I don't know, but I don't know where the gray is going to go to, but uh, let me double check the instruction and I'll be right back. The gray wire that you uh, just depinned from the 14 is going to go to position number 1. The red wire is going to go in place of the 14, uh, in place of that gray wire going to the 14. And the white wire is going to go to the 6, which is right below it. It's so hard not to cuss. Alright, but yeah, I go uh, you go ahead and uh uh tape everything back up and you should be ready to drive to the dealership by right now. And when you get there, install your ECU and then tell them that you want you just got a new ECU and you want a do a program which is gonna be new ECU um on the uh computer. I'm gonna show you in a minute. Alright. So this is gonna be from my passenger side. Um, there should be a carpet right here. Well, there is a carpet, there shouldn't be. There is a carpet right here. You just, um, that's held on by this uh, push pin with a Phillips head. You just twist it one time and pull it out. It'll come right out. Afterwards, uh, pull down your carpet. Um, you shouldn't really have to remove the kick panel on this side, but you want, you could if you want to, uh, you know, give you some more space. Um, it's gonna be, I believe that's a 12 millimeter right there. Uh, just go on the UAC and double check. One here and one here, just two. Okay, so two um, could probably do from the driver's side as well. But I'm gonna do from this side because uh, 
it's cooler on this side and it's hot over there all right um but before you disconnect those connectors you want to disconnect your battery um now if you don't know how to disconnect your battery then um i'm sorry you shouldn't be doing this by yourself <laughs> so like i said um it's a 10 millimeter by the way two 10 millimeter um unplug them all this one was a little bit pain in the ass to get it off so make sure you don't undo the bolt until you um get the connectors out this connector is going to be fighting with you the whole time so i suggest just undo this clip right here push this out push the connector under the uh, wire and uh, push it out of the way afterwards you can um when you pull it out, you want to angle it down just so it clear this piece. Or what you can do is just, or what you can do is just cut it off. Um, all it does is gonna hold the carpet on anyways. But unless you want it to look clean, I really don't give a fuck. Cut it out and it'll be 10 times easier. But uh, let me see if I can show you what it looks like going in. Oh yeah, you definitely want to remove this um, air duct right here too. Um, pop this air duct out. It'll be easier to get to that clip. New one's going in. All right. Here we go. Um, like I said, shove this piece down. Kind of like, hang on, it might so. Ah, damn it. I can connect this fighting with me again. Yeah, this is really difficult. Oh, you know what? I wonder if I can just shove you down in that vent. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's gonna give me so much more room. Now, remember connector side facing to the passenger side. Oh yeah, so much better. What you can do is um push this connector down in the uh the vent that's gonna completely move that thing out of your way um you can have a lot more clearance to pull it out there you go that's in before you want to tighten that all the way down though you want to go on the other side make sure that's in as well all right so this side it's uh pretty simple you just uh pull the carpet down and you don't have to remove anything else it's just it's right there that's right that board right there want to be on youtube hey youtube subscribe <laughs> <laughs> all right i got everything hooked up um i just haven't put everything back yet um but i should have done this first huh look at that god damn it well I'm downloading the software right now. I hope it's the Flash Pro Manager. Um, I don't really see anything else. So uh, I was able to make it home. Um, I got everything installed. Um, good news and bad news. So let's go with the good news first. When you first set everything, you're gonna have to register your car to the Flash Pro and you have to lock the ECU on. I'm gonna show you how to do that. To register the Flash Pro to your vehicle, you can click on Flash Pro right there go down to register owner and I'm not going to show you the rest but yeah, you just punch in your information and stuff and after that click on online go down to lock to vehicle click that and it's going to say blah 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 press ok whatever <laughs> after that this is on the instructions though you go to calibrations miscellaneous and 
uncheck the yellow dot right here second second ect sensor enabled evap leak detection evap vsv error coolant thermostat temperature fuel pump control enabled and yeah i think it's just one two three one two three four five yeah all right yep just those five uncheck all those five and you might have a better um luck than i do all right back to the bad news now when i start the car the rpm would chill at about 2000 to 1500 rpm when i step on the gas it, the rpm was just surge um i want to show you what it is but it's gonna get loud Fuck. screw it i'm doing it and let me show you guys what i'm talking about to drop to about 1 uh, 1500 check engine lights on but it said it's uh, air leak I know for a fact there's there is no air leak but uh give a little bit of gas and it was search if I rev it a little higher it would search even more you see how it will bounce up from uh, 1000 to 2000 rpm yeah uh, I really don't know how to fix that, but in this is going to conclude this video. Next video, I'm probably just going to go ahead and get a dyno tune and just call it a day. Oh, stupid dash. But for now, I'm just going to ride my bike for the rest of the week. Next week, I'm going to get a dyno tune and see what kind of number I'm making. Hopefully, I get to learn more about um, how to tune this damn thing. Yeah, I want to learn how to tune the car. But... All right, I want to thank everyone for watching this video. Um, I hope I explain everything perfectly clear for you guys. If you guys have any more questions, leave it in the comment section below. I'm going to try to fix this searching issues. I mean, I just keep messing around with it. But if anybody know what is going on um, or anyone knows how to tune, hit me up. Um, shout out to my boy, Jermaine. Um, I did it at my shop and he showed up, you know, gave up a company, gave me a little bit of input. At first I thought it was just an idle relearn, you know, just let it sit and have it uh, relearn on itself. But I let it idle for like 30 minutes and it was surge. After 15 minutes, um, it stopped surging. So I'm like, okay, so it was an idle relearn. Um, it dropped to 1000 RPM. So I'm like, okay, even better. Um, it didn't drop to the normal idle, which is about 70, uh, 750 rpm but it would continue to stay at a one so i'm like you know, probably just need a few more minutes um 40 minutes afterwards nothing so it's not really an idle relearn issues um i after that i took it for a drive um and the searching came back started searching again but it would search two or three times when i let off the gas and it would go back to normal normal as in uh, 1500 rpm which is not good um, I'm assuming that is running a little too lean because I did get a code for air leak um, that didn't happen before so I don't know how to adjust air fuel ratio but that's gonna be next week I'm gonna let the professional do it all right I appreciate you guys for watching have a good one